what's up rock stars it's rocks welcome back to the channel okay got a few things to talk about let's talk about president biden and all of his executive orders let's talk about uh, the gop and the mess that it is let's talk about shit that's going down with uh, the stock market and gamestop in particular I'm going to try my hardest to get that that story to you guys clearly, you guys. And then lastly, you guys, let's end it up, wrap it up with a little bit of a Rona check-in. Okay, let's get to it. All right, you guys. So President Biden came in and on the actual day that he was inaugurated, he had a list of things that he was going to undo, okay, that he was going to come in and all a lot of the things that YSAP had put in place. Um, his first order of business was to um, take him out of place, so to speak. So the executive orders that he's already done are, you know, he rejoined the Paris Climate Change Agreement. Remember, I was talking to you guys about that. We know that YSAP was not a believer of climate control and saying that, you know, the, the things that we put in the air was affecting the the climate when we all know that it is. He ended the Muslim travel ban. He canceled the permit for the Keystone XL pipeline. He stopped funding for the wall on the south border, you know, trying to keep uh, the Mexicans and, you know, those south of the border from coming into the United States. He reaffirmed DACA. He mandated masks on federal grounds. He told the Justice Department to drop contracts with private prisons. He reversed the ban on transgenders in the military. Uncle Joe Biden, the President Joe Biden, has been very, very busy and um, really trying to make sure that people understand that he comes in, he means business, he wants to make these changes. Um, and that he's trying to, you know, write. What did I say? He said he was fighting for the soul of America. Okay. So, of course, the Democrats love it. Of course, the Republicans hate it. Okay. They think that it is um, excessive use of his power. And um, they, they say that he's overreaching. Um, but I just smiled to myself because I was like, well, every president does that. When YSAP came in, he quickly undid a lot of the things that president obama had done okay and of course when he did that all the republicans loved it all right but now that the shoe is on the other foot and the democrats are now in charge well now the, the republicans are saying that it's outreaching and that you know that he should be doing this and the better path to these things is through you know congress and making sure that both sides agree on it and all of that um <clears throat> and i mean i'm sure that you know, there'll be some pushback on things, but these are the number one issues that he was most mostly um, wanting to make sure that he put the executive orders out there. And that's his right to do as the president of the United States. It's the name of the game in politics, you guys. Once you have the power, then you wield it. You know, when, when you get in there, you say, this is what the fuck I want to do. And because nobody can really tell you that you can't do it, then that's what you do. It's a perk of being the president. So we got those things out the way. Then, of course, um, Biden still definitely has a, a uphill battle uh, because the Republicans are really not trying to, um, you know, just roll over and, and, and play nice with the, the Democrats. I mean, it's gotten to be such bad feelings on both sides of the aisle against each other that I, you know, like I said, it's going to be hard for him still to get a lot of things done, especially when, um, you know, they, they've got to get some of the Republicans over on their side for certain things. Um, it's not just majority rule. Sometimes you got to get even more, which brings into uh, the conversation filibusters that I, can somebody please explain the filibuster to me? Um, there's been a lot of talk about that, and I don't understand it. And I've tried to over understand it over the years, and I just don't. So if anybody out there, because I have some poli you know, some political pundits for real who watch me, um, who can just kind of explain it a little bit better, because I, I don't know, but um, there's a lot of talk about filibustering and uh, Joe Biden holding his um, feelings on it, you know, like he's definitely not going to do the filibuster is going to do the filibuster child i don't know but I, I need some clarification on what even the filibuster means child what do you guys think about the president using his power to 
um, executively order things to be done. Do you guys think that as an abuse of power or do you just think that that's the way that it goes? I mean, it's been going on for years and years and years. So, you know, why we got a problem with it now? now let, let's talk about the GOP, you guys, and how much of a fucking mess it is. You know, we was talking about the, the Democrats um, four years ago when YSAP won his, um, you know, his nomination and whatnot. Um, and how the Democrats just really had dropped the ball and just let the Republicans, you know, we've always kind of talked about the Republicans being way more organized when it comes to their party and all of that. Well, right now the Republicans is a mess. Okay. I think officially they're trying to have a united front, you know, a united stand, but um, they have lost control over a lot of their party. Um, unofficially, like when you just kind of look at it, you know, they have let the right wing, um, the extreme right wing, the alternate, you know, the alternate right wing um, come in and take over and um, put a bad name on them. And um, they're linked to conspiracy theorists and, um, you know, QAnon and just like all of these things. Um, the people that, you know, the senators and the House of Representatives who are representing these states, I don't even know. Sometimes they really believe what they're saying, but they are afraid that they're going to, you know, lose the base. YSAP, even though he's not in the office any longer, he still has so much power because he still has a huge base. And the base is what's keeping those senators and those representatives in office. And if they go against YSAP, which which they very, very well may wish that they could do, then they could lose their base and they could lose their spot. Okay, so if you have further political aspirations, you want to stay in the game, then you're not going to, you know, you're not going to go against your base. And even if they don't want to do, and I think that they might be, or some of them might even be afraid, you know, um, quite a few of them might be afraid because we've seen over the last few weeks how um, those people are willing to fight and, you know, they say that they're willing to die for it. You know, and hell, I'm sure these senators and representatives wasn't planning on dying for nothing, you know. So now they found themselves in this position where they actually got to fight sometimes for something that they may not even believe in, namely talking about Mitch McConnell. OK, now Mitch McConnell is interesting because, you know, he's been behind Trump this whole four years. And then um, when we had the insurrection a few weeks ago, then Mitch McConnell was done. He was pissed. OK. Um, he, out of his own mouth, said that Donald Trump had, cre you know, had um, committed impeachable offenses and that he was willing to listen to the arguments. He's not going to try to whip up the votes to go against um, him being impeached. He was just going to sit back and watch. You know, all of a sudden he was talking about messing up our democracy and, you know, all of these things that people have been saying, but you guys have allowed YSAP to run the fuck amok for four fucking years and create the problem and the mess that the United States have today. So it was like, is it too little too late? But still, it was interesting that he had taken that stance. Now, I don't know what happened between then and like, you know, yesterday or a couple of days ago when finally the Senate had to vote on whether or not they felt like um, YSAP needed to be impeached. Well, we already knew that the majority of the Republicans did not want it to happen, okay? Um, again, it was as if they forgot about what had happened, okay? That these this mob of people was in there and they was trying to get to y'all and y'all was hiding and wearing gas masks and scared and shit, okay? But then afterwards, they was like, oh, that was nothing. The Republican reps from the House of Representatives, you know, they were all just like, no, this is wrong, this is wrong. He doesn't need to be impeached. And then now it's also shown in the Senate, Okay, all of the Republican senators, including Mitch McConnell, okay, they all said no, they don't think that he should be impeached. There were only five senators who said no, he does need to be impeached, okay? But I mean, you know the you know the majority rules, so it, it, we already knew that they had to have 17 Republicans in order to convict um Donald Trump. Um, and right now, do the math, 
like the senator said. They have only have five people that say that he, sh that he should be convicted. Um, there's really no way that a conviction is going to happen. The Democrats are still going to go forward because it needs to happen. But there's there's no hope really, you guys, unless something mir miraculous happens in the next couple of weeks because the um, impeachment trial has been pushed off to February so that everybody can get their arguments together, you know, so that they can present um, their best side at the trial. But as of now, it doesn't look like YSAP is going to be convicted. Um, and that means that he will still go on as um, um, <laughs> YSAP and still get the benefits of a former um, SAP is able to run for president possibly in four more years, which is the part that really just makes my stomach turn, you guys. So it's very important we don't let that happen. Child, I'm telling you that that definitely cannot happen if, if he runs for, um, I don't think it will, but you just don't know how these next four years can go. And trust me, the Republicans are going to be hot on the trail of trying to make sure that they gain the power back of the presidency. So, but it is a mess because the Republicans have always been very conservative and, you know, we kind of looked at them as the uppity, stiff type and the Democrats was the more liberal, the more loose. And now we've just got like all of these real, like loosely hinged, barely hinged people that's also been kind of pulled into their party um, and, you know, known that they're part of that party. And I'm sure that they would rather they didn't have to deal with that group. But it's, it's inevitable. The group is there creating problems for the Republican Party. Um, and so <clears throat> we'll see how it all goes. That base is strong. Like I said, Mitch McConnell changing his mind, um, going against what he said just a few weeks ago. And now, you know, voting with his senators like that'll let you know that people are afraid to cross that base. Um, and so I, I don't know, but, th but they don't have control of their party right now for sure. And I know that must make all of the old heads, you know, very, very sick. My Republican rock stars out there, y'all let me know what, what, the, what, what y'all thinking about all of this. Cause I do know that there are some Republicans who didn't vote for YSAP, obviously. And if I have any of those in my you know, that are watching, then you guys let me know what you think about this impeachment and the conviction and all of that. I mean, do you think that it needed to happen? I know that my de Democrats and, you know, those of us who voted for Biden, I'm sure, I mean, I, I pretty much know how you guys feel. I am asking for those who are supportive, uh, you know, who are supportive Republicans, but not necessarily a YSAP supporter. What did you guys think about this impeachment that's coming up? Y'all let me know. All right, you guys. Now, I, I don't know anything about the stock market, um, you know, except for a very, I'm talking about a very general layman's explanation of how the stock market works. Basically, the wealth of something is created by, if people believe in it, it's created through the shares. You buy the shares, and if you believe in this product enough and you have enough shares, it continues to grow really, really big, and that's how people make money off of the stocks, okay? Now, that is the most layman's, and I'm sure I left a whole bunch of shit out, but that's basically what it is, all right? Um, <clears throat> when I worked for um, the DA's office, my, my boss back then, she had actually bought stock in um, Singular or something years and years and years and years ago. It wasn't even Singular at the time when she bought it, but you know, it had turned into Singular and she was cashing out her stock. Um, she was about to retire back in the early 2000s. And I can remember her saying how she just made so much fucking money off of that stock and she just didn't even know and all of that. So that's why I know that if you just put the money in a company, maybe at their early starts, and if it grows to be huge, then you will make money off of that stock. Okay. So, um, but, but this new, but what's happening right now is something different. So GameStop, um, they look, look to be like the unlikely, um, benefiters of a experiment, I guess, used on Reddit. So there were Reddit, Reddit users who um, kind of were tired of the establishment, kind of want to, you know, sock it to the man 
um, basically tired of the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer. So there is a group of some millions of um, Reddit users who decided to get into the market, pick a company, in this case, GameStop, um, and buy the shares and drive up the value of those shares um, in, in what they call like a short squeeze. Now, you guys, trust me, I don't know this. I read up on it and I was trying to really make sense of it. So I'm giving you guys <laughs> my version, but it's dumbed down to the, to, the, to the most. It is really, really not the full explanation. And if you know way more about this and you are welcome to tell me I'm wrong, Roxanne, and let me explain it to you because I don't really understand it. But basically, the users push the value of the GameStop stock up 10,000%. Wall Street had decided that GameStop was not going to do well and um, their shares were very low, $17.25 a share. Um, and the Reddit users had decided that they was going to teach the Wall Street um, investors that, you know, they were wrong and that they were going to drive up these shares, the value of these shares by investing money in the stock. Okay, so like I said, these millions of people, then this is just average folks. It was putting their money in and buying the stock. And evidently in the stock market, in order to protect yourself, you actually have to buy, put money into that same stock just so that you don't lose money in the future. Okay, it's something that they call a short squeeze. Basically, the stock went up from $17.25 a share. It went all the way up to $159.18 a share. Okay, and uh, once they got it to there, you know, it looks like it was losing its steam and it was starting to drop back down. And then Elon Musk, yes, the owner of Tesla, he tweeted his 43 million uh, followers. He tweeted about the, you know, the situation with GameStop stock and that drove it up again. It drove up the interest. People started putting their money into the GameStop stock and drove it up to now it is $347.51 a share. If you bought 10 shares for $17.25, you paid $170.25. Well, all you got to do is I mean is multiply 10 times 3 $147.51 a share, and you've made over $3,000. People are making quick money off of it, and they are continuing to put their money into these shares and driving the price up, and Wall Street is now having to come in and put money in towards it as well, even though they said that it wasn't going to do well, but they're stuck. They have to do it to protect themselves, and um, it's just going up and up and up and up and up, okay? So, and in December... GameStop was worth $2 billion. Um, as of yesterday, GameStop is worth $24 billion. And they're saying that that is a false worth. That is not truly what it is worth. But because of this whole volat volatility of the stock market and people putting their money there um, and just driving it up, driving it up, um, eventually it's going to fail. Eventually it's going to balloon and blow up and um, you know, to go back down. But this is kind of the way for, you know, just the average Joe to kind of, like I said, stick it to the man of Wall Street and just let them know that, yeah, we can make a difference in the stock market if we really want to. So they're doing it with um, GameStop. They are doing it with AMC. Okay. Um, they're doing it with BlackBerry. So they've decided to pick out companies that are failing or, you know, that were once big but are now starting to lose money. And they're just um, having fun, really. It's going to blow, you guys. But in the meantime, they're having a good time and people are making money off of it. There was some sort of halt that was put on so people couldn't invest any more money in these stocks because now they know what they're doing. Um, now the Wall Street stock market knows what they're doing, you know, um, Reddit users. And so they've kind of put the halt on it and are giving people their money back and not allowing them to buy the stock in these different companies um, anymore. So, <clears throat> like I said, this is really a dumbed down for real super layman's, might not even 100% or even 50% be correct. Like I really would like for somebody out there who is like up on this, 
um, to kind of explain it. Whatever it is, they have got Wall Street on the ropes. I mean, even if it might not be a knockout, you know, it's definitely something where uh, these Wall Street investors are annoyed and um, having to deal with just you know, a regular somebody who's a fucking general contractor for a, a construction company out there putting their money in and, you know, kind of fucking up the the um, shares and the stock market and all of this for these companies. So interesting story. Um, very, very interesting story. You guys let me know, like I said, what you know about it, <laughs> what you think about it. And please correct me where I'm wrong. Okay, get the story out there right for me, y'all. All right, you guys. And then lastly, let's talk about the Rona check-in. I got some numbers for you. As of yesterday, 25.6 million people have had the coronavirus in the United States since it started in March of last year. Um, on the 27th, there were 155,629 new cases. Um, there have been 429,312 deaths um, since this whole thing began. And yesterday, 4,101 deaths were reported. The numbers are going down, all right? 45 states are now trending downward um, as far as infections are concerned. Um, and we believe, they believe that it might be because there was a surge after the holidays and now, you know, people are back to being at home and not being around big groups of people and all not traveling and all of that. So that is why the numbers are going down. But all we need is for something else to happen where everybody starts to go back out and you know, then the numbers surge back up again. But right now we're on a downward trend. Some places are starting to let up on these restrictions. Okay, California, who continues to be at the top of everybody's list when we talk about coronavirus. Um, the governor there is easing up on restrictions, um, mostly because the people in California are sick of all of the restrictions, the businesses in particular, they're losing so much money and the numbers still continue to go up. Like what is the fact, what is the reason that you have all these lockdowns and, and the numbers are still rising? You you at least need to allow these people to make some money, I guess, in their businesses. Um, at least that's what these business owners think. If the numbers gonna go up, they gonna go up whether or not they open or not. I think that is really kind of how they look at things now. Um, and they're tired. Of course, people are fatigued. People are broke. Businesses need to make their money. Um, and so they've been putting the pressure on the governor there because I'm sure they will not vote him back in. If he's able to run again, I'm sure they ain't gonna let him back in. But they're putting the pressure on him that he needs to open up the state like this is ridiculous. And so now he is opening the state back up. That is what's happening as far as the Rona is happening. Um, like I said, the vaccinations, uh, they are starting to ramp up the vaccinations. They say that they average about 1 million um, vaccinations a day, you know, countrywide. And um, they are planning on ramping that up even more. Supposedly, President Biden has 300 million dosages that are on the way. And um, I don't think the you know, the output of the dosages is not the problem. It's just the problem of trying to get it implemented, trying to get it put into people's arms. They're opening up stadiums and, and everything for people to come and uh, get it done. I think they said that they opened up Dodger Stadium and that people were going there and they were able to get like eight, somewhere around close to 8,000 people inoculated that day. That's still not a lot though, you guys. But I mean, it's a start. Everybody is pretty much slow going. The only state that really has a good turnout as far as these immunizations are, um, sorry, not immunizations, um, vaccinations are concerned is West Virginia. Um, they have the biggest percentage of um, vaccinations that they've been able to get out to their people. And so maybe people will start to follow their um, example of whatever they're doing to make sure that they get it out there. But yeah, the vaccines, they, they trying to get them to you guys. They're trying to get them to you, but it's a, um, like I said, it's bottleneck on the websites. The appointments are all taken up. It's hard for people to get in. Um, people are trying to get their second dosages and, you know, that ain't happening for some people. Um, so it's still quite a mess, but they're trying to get it together. Then there's been some scandal attached with the immunizations. We had a doctor that stole a vial um, 
They're saying that he stole the vial so that he can give the vaccinations to like his friends and family. I think they said it was like nine dosages in that vial that he took. He said that he took it because it had already been thawed. It was the end of the day and they were gonna have to throw the vaccination out anyway. Um, if, you know, because there were no more people, the, the, the facility where they were administering the vaccinations was closing. And so he took it and um, was going to give it to people who needed it. That is where he's at with that, you know, his defense. Um, and then we also had a paramedic who stole just the empty vials and filled it with some unknown substance. I don't know if it was water or what, but he was saying that, you know, he was peddling it kind of on the black market as he was doing, you know, vaccinations for those who wanted it. And it wasn't even the, it wasn't even, the, um, you know, it wasn't even the medication in there. So he was arrested for that. And um, I think we'll probably hear more and more stories of this. You know, there's a lot of talk about the rich and the well-to-do who are trying to jump the lines to try to get the vaccinations from like their private doctors so that they don't have to wait um, there are people, there's talk of people trying to come from other countries to do it. Um, and so, yeah, th there's a lot of all of that going on. I guess the vaccination is the hot thing right now that people want to get to. And so people are starting to get de desperate and, and do desperate things. But hopefully in, in short time that they'll have all of these vaccinations available and people can, you know, get to it, um, if they're trying to inoculate all of these people by the end of his first 30 days or his first 100 days or whatever it is, um, they're going to have to open it up to even more. Right now, it's 65 um, years old and older. They can get it no matter what, okay? And, um, you know, so they're going to keep opening up the tiers and eventually it'll just be available to everybody. And, you know, then um, I think they don't want to make it available to everybody right now because they don't have enough people to give it to everybody. But um, hopefully they'll have it soon enough. So <clears throat> that's it. Have any of you guys been? Um, I know a few because I saw that, Rachel. Um, I saw that you got yours. Um, and I, there's a few people that have said that they've had it, you know, so you guys let us know how's it going. Were you able to get your second dosage? Um, y'all, y'all leave your experience about all that below. All right, you guys, that is it. I am going to get off of here. Make sure that you rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'm It's Rocks. The channel is It's Rocks and everything else I do will be in the bottom bar. All right, all right. So I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day and I plan on doing the same. Till next time, rock stars. Bye.